Hey guys, Tisal here and I'm shooting on location and we're doing a photo shoot today and it's going to be like a Japanese warrior inspired makeup. So I have the photographer Rich Shermanella right here. He's setting up the studio and I'm going to be the model and the model today. So it's going to be a little exciting and he's actually offered to have me do the tutorial here while he's setting up. So that's a really great thing as well. Um, I don't really ever get to use this uh, synthetic set that I keep talking about because usually on my tutorials I always use the natural brushes. So today I'm going to use only the synthetic brushes so that, let me show you again, just so you can see what these can actually do for you. And because a lot of people are discouraged and don't really know much about synthetic and think that it's not a really good or high quality, so they prefer to use natural. So I'm um, going to be using those, and the reason why is because I'm going to be using the Krylon um, Aqua Color palette to do the makeup today. So if you know anything about Japanese makeup, uh, usually like the geishas usually you have like the white face and the colors are very pronounced and bright so that's the reason why I'm going to be using the Krylon uh, aqua color palette so um, how these usually work is you have to spray it with water to activate so it's just kind of like using watercolor but not quite but uh, better quality of course so um, I'm going to get right to it I hope you enjoy the tutorial and I'll see you for the final look bye The first thing we need to do is base our face with the color white from the Krylon Aqua Color Collection. Grab a bottle of water, spray directly to the color and activate it. This will make the color moist enough for you to use. Using the foundation brush, I'm going to apply the color all over my face from the hairline to just where my jawline meets. I left a circle around my eyes because I wanted to go back and make sure that I do this correctly. Aqua color is very sensitive to water, so I don't want to put the color too close to my eyes because in case my eyes get watery, it will smear the makeup and might even get into my eyes. So be very careful when you're going around your eyes. What we're going to be doing later is cover it with eyeliner, and this will actually stop the color from running in case it does tear up. When you get to the lips, apply a little lip balm or chapstick, but make sure you only pat a tiny amount because you don't want the makeup to cake up. When it dries, it can be a little bit irritating and uncomfortable if you don't put on a little bit of moisturizer on your lips. For the eyebrows, I'm going to use the angle brush with the black aqua color. If you refer back to the picture, it has a very high and sharp arch. So to achieve this look, start low from the inner corner and gradually pull it out higher when you reach to the top. Underneath the high arch, it should be thicker and rounded out. So starting from the middle of your eyebrow, gradually pull it out so that you have a rounded bottom. For this look, you're going to have very thick liner going around your eyes. Start from the outer corner of your eye and pull it out to the point and then gradually pull it in. Begin to line the bottom so it meets the outer corner. Remember, don't get too close to the lash line because we are using aqua color at this point. We will be going back with the gel liner to get into the water line so that it will complete the look. Now that you've got your outline, you can begin to fill it in. But notice that I'm still not putting the color on my lash line. With a precision brush, I used black gel eyeliner to fill in the waterline and my lash line. This is going to be a very dramatic cat look, so don't be afraid to pack on a lot of dark color. I even created a tip at the inner corners of my eyes. And don't forget, I also put on a very thick liner at the top as well. Using the smallest flat shader brush, 
I'm going to draw a pattern by starting from the tip of the tail and bringing it out to my hairline. Although the picture was red, I'm going to grill it up and use hot paint. Giving some space from the first outline, I'm going to draw the second outline, pulling it from the hairline going in. Once I hit that tail again, I'm going to make almost a U-turn and bring it back out to my hairline. Starting from the center of my eye, I'm going to pull the outline out and make it symmetrical to the top of the U. Now you can go back and fill it in. Now you have to draw a bridge. This should connect from one tip of the inner corner to the other. For the bottom design, we're going to start from the corner of the nose and pull it out to the hairline. The way that we do this is we actually pull the color up so that it looks like a little arch. And then we're going to bring it back down so it's lined up and parallel to the top design. From here, go back and make the line thicker. For the lips, I chose purple from the aqua color palette. I'm going to draw it as a geisha would. We're going to overemphasize the lips by drawing outside of the line. Notice I only drew it halfway because we're going to be drawing a heart in the middle of the lips. To make sure my bottom lips are even with the top, I'm going to draw an outline from the left side and the right side. And then I'm going to color it in. To complete this look, I'm going to put on lashes. The first one I'm going to put on is short and very dense so it gives me that smoldering look. For the second pair of lashes, I use one that's really long and pronounced in spikes. Normally people put this at the bottom and use the shorter ones on top, but I want to make sure that the tip of the lashes really show so I don't want to weigh it down with the layer of lashes on top.